It's time now to look at a breakthrough development that's expected to provide even faster cross-border payments. With the support of banks from both sides of the Atlantic, EBA Clearing, SWIFT and the Clearinghouse have joined forces to speed up and enhance cross-border payments. It was announced earlier today that the first proof of concept has been successfully completed, where participating banks exchanged payment and confirmation of receipt messages. The underlying initiative, titled Immediate Cross-Border Payments, is aimed at addressing frictions and pain points found with traditional cross-border payments. And to look at this in more detail, we are joined by Matt Luce, who's the SWIFT Institute Director and Strategy Executive at SWIFT, Petra Plompen, Senior Manager at EBA Clearing, and Steve Ledford, who's the Senior Vice President at The Clearing House. So it's very good to see all of you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Cybos TV. Matt, let me start first with you. Can you tell us about the work that you've announced today? Because this was a significant uh, announcement. And in fact, if you could actually explain what the significance of this is. Yeah, uh, a pleasure to be here. I think for me, it's critical as we go forward and improve cross-border transactions that we really figure out how to do that in a new instant space. And that's what we've done with this announcement and proof of concept. We've looked at how do we take two real-time payment systems and domestic markets that are mature and have had success, and how do we bring them together for a better cross-border experience. Steve, if we could come to you, you're a key part of this work, uh, but what problems had you previously faced? And importantly, how will this change, change things? Well, one of the things we wanted to do was eliminate as much friction from the cross-border experience. Um, and what we wanted to do is replicate as closely as possible what folks experience when they're uh, making immediate payments within their own borders or their own region. And so what we tried to do was figure out how to, by linking systems in different areas, how we could come as close as possible to replicate that experience. And what we did with the proof of concept was actually a synchronization between the uh, real-time payments RT1 in Europe and RTP in the United States. Petra, let me bring you into the conversation because we know that the industry has done a great deal to improve correspondent banking in recent years, an example of that being the implementation of the SWIFT Global Payments Initiative. But why does it need to do more and what does the new system known as IXB actually bring to the table? What does it add? Yes, you're right. And, and all of us at Cybers can uh, uh, acknowledge that. We've done a lot in cross-border payments. But there is, as Steve mentioned, an increasing expectation of real-time and uh, faster payments as users have it domestically. And there's also a regulatory expectation. And, and the new thing that we want to bring with linking the payment systems in addition to all the efforts ongoing is that we will be able to synchronize settlement of a payment in overseen payment systems. And that way we can make sure that the payment is done in a single moment and not in a series of steps where a payment might succeed in one system but then fail in the other. And with linking the payment systems, we add certainty of the payment and we reduce, of course, the speed and we increase the transparency. And we can also reduce the number of exception handling and thus enable scaling in this immediate cross-border space. Matt, this certainly sounds like an impressive development, but where do we go from here? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, this is just the start. Obviously, at SWIFT, we're doing a lot to create an instant and frictionless environment, account to account. And so the proof of concept proved out a lot of what we can do. And now it's getting into the details and figuring out how do we make it live, make it real? How do we expand it to multiple markets and connect you know, multiple currencies cross border? And ultimately, you know, as we've discussed, how do we create a cross border experience that has a domestic feel? And that is not easy. It's easy to say, but it's not easy to accomplish. And as you know, Steve and Petra mentioned, right, there's a lot we need to do in the compliance FX space to really end some of the friction. And that's what we're going to drill into. To me, straight through payments is the easy part. But in all payments, there are edge cases that need to be solved. 
And so for us, that's really where we want to drill into and make sure we've got a great end-to-end solution that solves this for all banks of all sizes and clients of all sizes as well. Yeah. I mean, Petra, just, just listening to Matt, the, you, know, you get the sense that this is a magnificent development, but it's happening against a, a really active backdrop because you've got financial institutions coping with ISO 2022 migration and also invariably regulatory changes. And that's probably just the tip of the iceberg. But will the immediate cross-border payments project add to that burden in terms of time and, of course, resources? Clearly, the industry has a lot on its plate and we all deal uh, with uh, the quick developments in the market and expectations from regulators. Um, the key aspect of IXB and beyond that we try to bring that synchronization that we mentioned is that we want to leverage existing building blocks. So rather than uh, drive the industry to a new investment from scratch, we will connect and take the, the best of the components that all three of our entities have and combine them to deliver this IXP service at an effort that is as low as possible for the industry to be able to pick it up, as Matt said, for all users, small and large. Steve, do you think this push for faster, for cheaper, more convenient payments is a, is a threat or, or an opportunity uh, for users given increasing competition in this space and, and new digital currency developments? Well, I, th I think it's a, it's an opportunity. Uh, I mean, the world is the, the world is the world is evolving. Folks are expecting instant. They're expecting immediate. They're expecting transparency. So one of the things we wanted to do was fulfill all of those. If you're doing a better job of fulfilling your customers' expectations, um, you have lots of opportunity. This is a way to make sure that the um, financial services industry can keep up with what folks are expecting in the room. Uh, and Matt, how are your members reacting? I mean, I think you can see very well. I think if you look at the, uh, the fact that we have 11 financial institutions, some of the largest in Europe and the U.S., who are uh, participating in the Blue Project created IFB, I think that if you look at the fact that we have Institutions actively participating, and this was something that was done in order. It shows how important this is to our members. And Petra, what what are the main benefits of, of real time payment interlinkage? The the benefits of having it linked uh, through systems. We touched upon the synchronization of settlement. That that's really a key element that we can achieve with the linkage. The fact that the settlement takes place at the same time in both systems gives full certainty of that payment and reduces all the risks of a payment being processed in one system and not being processed in the other. And we have done the proof of concept with these two systems uh, but the model as such and the whole approach is something that we see is rec replicable uh, across different currency corridors using other uh, instant payment systems in other currency areas and also opportunity to leverage high value payment systems with liquidity efficiency uh, for certain payments. Well, guys, it's been wonderful to pick your brains this afternoon. Thank you so much for your time here on Cybos TV. Matt Luz, Swift Institute Director and Strategy Executive of Swift. Uh, Petra Plompen, uh, Senior Manager at EBA Clearing. And Steve Ledford, uh, Senior Vice President.